Well, good evening, each one. We welcome you to our online Bible study for this Wednesday evening. So glad that you could tune in tonight. We're going to turn to number 458, and this is the hymn, Draw Me Nearer, 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 Blessed Lord, number 458, and we'll sing this one together as we begin tonight. Okay. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it's all thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 tells us. Let's bow together for a word of prayer as we gather together around the word of God. Father, we thank you tonight for this time we can gather in. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray, Father, as it's spoken tonight and as we hear your word, uh, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts, that, Father, the Spirit of God would minister to each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for those that are tuning in. We thank you for the so many blessings that you give us on every every day, Lord. We thank you for blessings, Lord. We thank you for grace. We thank you for strength. Father, we pray for those that are going through difficulty, those that are going through times of trial, heartache, whatever the situation is, Father, you know. And we just thank you, Lord, that you care, that you minister to each need according to thy will. Father, we pray that you would be with us as your word is opened. Father, we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ would be lifted up. We thank you for him tonight and that he is the one that is our Savior. He is the one who went to the cross and laid his life down so that we might have life. Jesus said, I am come that ye might have life and that ye might have it more abundantly. And so, Father, we thank you for the abundant life we have in Jesus tonight. We pray, Father, again, that you would speak to each need and, Father, that you would minister to each heart. And Lord, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, and for it's in his precious name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles with me, please, and we're going to turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, and it is in the Gospel of Mark that you find 16 chapters. 16 chapters. The Gospel of John, uh, 
comes in, we could say, in second as far as the chapters are concerned, uh, with 21 chapters. Luke's gospel has 24 chapters. Matthew's gospel has eight, uh, 28 chapters. And all of this just to say that the gospel of Mark presents the Lord Jesus Christ as the humble servant, as the servant who came down, who laid down his life for us. And uh, what we have in a very brief period of writing in the 14 chapters is an extensive ministry, and we find in particular that the multitudes were moved by the, the working and the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so last time we looked together, we were in chapter 1, and we were looking at the four voices the four voices giving witness to who the Lord Jesus is. And we found the witness of John Mark himself calling Jesus the Son of God. We have the witness of the prophets, the prophets Isaiah and Malachi, who foretold the one who would come. And speaking of John the Baptist, and it said, he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And he says, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. And so there was the call to prepare the way of the Lord. And so it was very Jehovah God. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who was going to come and he was going to dwell among men. He was going to become God, manifest in the flesh, God incarnate. And so this was the message of preparation that Jesus is, uh, would begin his earthly ministry. And then we found the voice or the testimony of John the Baptist himself, who said in verse number 17, And he preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And John the Baptist had a powerful ministry, but it was one which he always looked to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, there, one, there cometh one mightier than I after me. The shoes, uh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. And that was the ministry of John the Baptist, that the Lord Jesus would increase, but that he would decrease. And so we see the picture of the servant. We also found the other, the, another fourth voice of witness, and that is the voice of God the Father himself. The Lord Jesus is baptized of John and Jordan, and straightway in verse 10, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened, and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him, and there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we found that the Lord Jesus is the beloved Son, and in whom he was well pleased, his heavenly Father speaking to him. We have the four witnesses to the Lord Jesus and who he is. Tonight I want to do a bit of a survey through several chapters, and we will witness the powerful ministry of Christ. The Lord Jesus had a powerful ministry, one that's displayed for us in the Gospel of Mark. And it didn't matter what city or what town the Lord Jesus entered into, there were people that were drastically changed by his teaching, by his miracles. And I want to notice with you, if you look in chapter 1, this is a very one of my favorite passages in Mark's Gospel, and it points out to us just the, the servant's heart of the Lord Jesus. Notice the servant's heart as we look in verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogues a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with Authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout abroad, throughout all the region round about Galilee. And so we have all the region of Galilee impacted by the ministry of the Lord Jesus. 
by the truth that he can speak with authority. He wasn't speaking as the, as the religious leader spoke. He spoke with authority and he spoke um, uh, and he taught them. And notice he says to the unclean spirit, he says, hold thy peace and come out of him. And Jesus had authority over the demons, over those that were possessed by demons. And the, the message and the ministry of Jesus and uh, what he was doing was spread. And so they said, what authority? What new doctrine is this? What thing is this? For what a, with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Notice in verse 29, and forthwith, as they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and anon, or immediately, they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and sent out the devils to speak, because they knew him. And so what do we have here? We have the whole city gathered together at the door. They're bringing the sick. They're bringing those that are demon-possessed. They're bringing them to the teacher. They're bringing them to the healer. They're bringing them to this one who they said, what manner of man is this? What... Uh, authority he speaks he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him and they bring him to the door and the bible says that jesus healed them and he healed them and in verse number 35 and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and into a and entered uh, and departed unto a solitary place and there prayed and simon and they that were with him followed after him when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. The multitudes were looking for him. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And we, are, we find much of demonic possession in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a lot of demonic activity. Satan was doing his very best to try to uh, turn people away from the Son of God. Satan himself knew who he was. The demons trembled before him, and they said, I know who thou art, the Holy One of God. The demons knew, and they trembled at the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew his voice had authority and had power, and his voice today has authority and has power. And yes, there are those that are demon-possessed in our world today. And, you know, we realize that there are some that are possessed of devils, and then maybe in Canada, maybe in other places, maybe in our own very towns, our own towns, and we can open ourselves up. Now, as believers, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. We are protected by the Spirit of God. We can certainly be influenced by Satan and by his attacks. But for an unbeliever, uh, certainly can be possessed by the devil. They do not have the Spirit of God dwelling in them. And they can open themselves up to demonic possession by many ways. And one of the ways this happens is by mind-altering substances. By mind-altering substances. And your minds open up. And your souls open up. And it's a very dangerous thing. And the, and the Word of God warns against these things. And we need the power. Those that are possessed by the demonic possession need the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to save them from that. And he's willing to save them. He's willing to forgive them. He's willing to heal them. And we ought to pray for them that they would come to know Christ as personal Savior. And for Christians that are certainly influenced by demons today and are tempted and tested and all these various ways in which uh, even God will allow at times uh, the devil only to have a certain amount of uh, uh, influence upon us. But we realize we need the Lord's help. We need his strength. We need the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that the devil is powerful, not more powerful than the Lord Jesus, but he has great power in the earth today. He is the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so for us to be deceived into thinking that Satan is just, he has a, a, another mandate to influence uh, just uh, those that uh, don't love the Lord and his word. Well, 
He's going to attack those that love the Lord. He's going to attack those that love the Word of God. He's going to attack those that desire to stand upon the truth of God's Word. And so we need the Lord's power. We need the power of Christ. And so the Lord Jesus, uh, he had a ministry of healing those that were demon-possessed, those that were sick. They came from every quarter. And notice it says in verse 40, And there came a leper unto him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightway charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus told no, could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert places. And they came to him from every quarter. And so when we see the multitudes that are influenced by the powerful ministry of the Lord Jesus. He could no longer be in the, in the cities. He was in the, in the country places, and they were coming out by the thousands to see this Jesus. They were coming out by the thousands to hear his word. They were coming out by the thousands to, to hear the word of God and see the Lord do a miraculous thing. And so there was a season of time that passes. The Lord Jesus enters in again into Capernaum and it says notice what it says in verse 1 of chapter 2 and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in this in the house and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word of God to them we know that there's this is the passage that they lower the one who was sick of the palsy they open the tiles from the roof and they lower him down and the Lord Jesus says unto him son thy sins be forgiven thee and there was an outcry uh, thinking who can forgive sins but God only and Jesus speaks to them and he says that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose, verse 12, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. And I take us to this passage, because again it reminds us of the multitudes that are surrounding the Lord Jesus, and that are following him. And this man's life is drastically changed. And the lives of those that are standing round about seeing this man sick of the palsy, they no doubt had identified him or had known him from the area. He's laid down. His friends lower him down before the Lord Jesus. And they're just amazed. And they glorify God. And they say, we never saw it in this fashion. And so they give God the glory for this miracle. And so we see the Lord Jesus ministering to the multitudes and and uh, the multitudes are moved by the ministry of the Lord Jesus and it says in verse 13 and he went forth again by the seaside and all the multitude resorted to him and he taught them it didn't matter which direction he went they followed him they followed him and wouldn't that be wonderful if there was multitudes today that were looking to follow the Lord Jesus and you know there are multitudes today all over the world today who love Jesus They've invited Jesus into their heart. They've asked for forgiveness of sins. They believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And they're saved today. They're not just saved for time, but saved for all of eternity. The blood of Christ has washed their sins away. And that's the truth of us tonight. We know Jesus is personal savior. We're part of that multitude that are following Jesus. And you know, there's room for more to join. There's room for more to come and to follow the Lord Jesus. And so the multitudes follow him in chapter 3. We find them following him. In verse 20 of chapter 3, it says, And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. The multitudes gathering. In chapter 4 and verse 1, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat on the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea, and on the land, and he begins to teach them in parables. And we just get a glimpse, we see this, uh, the Lord Jesus in the boat, and they're all on the land, and he's got this great audience that he's
preaching to and ministering to, and they're listening so attentively to the Savior as he begins to teach them about the sower and the seed. And so what we find here are the multitudes. What we find is that the ministry of Jesus was powerful. It was powerful in miracles. It was powerful in teaching. And it says in chapter 5 and verse 21, notice another instance. Um, in verse 20, it said, and he departed, and this was the man of Gadara who was healed of the demons. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And uh, they gathered again to the Lord Jesus. And he, uh, he, he is met by one who his daughter was sick. And he says, I pray thee, it says in verse 21, he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. And uh, the, the people were thronging around the Lord Jesus. They were, it says, and Jesus went with them, and the much people followed him and thronged him. And the Lord Jesus heals the woman who had the issue of blood. And we find... Who, we could ask the questions, why was the multitudes following him? Well, we find one tremendous answer here in verse number, um, verse number, let me see here, verse 38. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he take the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and enter, entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Klumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly, straight, that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat he says unto her arise she had physically died there was no more breath in her and jesus says that she's asleep they're laughing him to scorn because she has already been dead some time and they're weeping they're mocking him he calls them out he calls the mother and the father he calls james Peter and John with the Lord Jesus and they all go into that room into that bedroom and they witness a tremendous miracle the voice of the Savior who calls the dead to rise why were the multitudes following why were the multitudes following the Lord Jesus because of his wonderful words that he spoke but because of the wonderful deeds that he that he did he was very God himself in the flesh and so the Lord Jesus raises this young girl to life and he calls for food to be brought. And so we could say what could be the overarching testimony of the multitudes? It could be all summed up in chapter 7 and verse 31. Verse 31 of chapter 7 and again departing from the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the midst of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his finger into his ears and spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, sighed and saith unto him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But, he, um, but the more he charged them, the, the more a great deal they published it. And were beyond measure astonished, saying... He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And that phrase that they said, He hath done all things well. We could sum up the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ with that one phrase, He hath done all things well. Whether it was what he spoke, whether it was the words that he uh, 
the words that he spoke or the miracles and the works that he did, but ultimately it would all lead to the cross. And there's a transition in the Gospel of Mark that goes from a ministry of teaching, a ministry of healing, to a ministry of preparing for the cross, a ministry of speaking of the cross, speaking of Golgotha's hill, speaking in the ninth chapter in the 10th verse, chapter 9 and verse 10. And it says, and he spoke to them concerning the cross. And it says in verse number 10, and we have the transfiguration, and they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And Jesus begins to speak to them concerning these things in verse 31. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. We find in the 10th chapter in verse number 32, Jesus, they were, um, and they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were all were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid, and he took them again, uh, the 12, and he began to tell them things that should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, unto the chief priests. And unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him unto the Gentiles. And they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. Jesus could not have been any more clearer with what was going to take place in Jerusalem, and the cross, and his crucifixion, and his resurrection. And ultimately, um, verse 45 speaks to the truth of the cross. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And so what we find then in the Gospel of Mark is the life of a servant. He lived the servant's life and his life, his ministry was much about serving others, much about um, letting people know who he was and that he was the Savior and ultimately preparing for the cross, the greatest act of sacrifice, the greatest act of service that could ever have been accomplished was accomplished for you and for me on Calvary. I wonder, are we among the multitudes today that are seeking to follow the Lord Jesus? Are we among the multitudes today that are saying, he hath done all things well? When we look at our lives and we look at the blessings that the Lord has given to us, are we quick to say he has done all things well? We think of our salvation. We think of all of the, the spiritual blessings and heavenly places that we have in the Lord. But then we think of the many ways in which the Lord blesses us each and every day. And we can be so thankful. And we can be part of the multitudes today gathered around this world. We're living in dark days. We're living in days of departure from the word of God. But there's still a remnant of souls that know and love the Savior. And there's still a multitude today that is seeking to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus and to make much of him, that he must increase and we must decrease, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For he is the Son of God and he is the Son of Man, and he came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And I trust the Lord will bless his word to each one of us tonight as we look to this one who came to serve, this one who came to all the multitudes, and they just, he didn't even have to speak. He just, he just, uh, he didn't have to say, now follow me. They just were attracted to him, and they followed him. And so may it be that we're attracted to him tonight, and it is our desire to follow our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I trust each one tonight can say for sure that they know him as personal Savior, and that they're ready for heaven, and that their sins are forgiven. And we can be sure of that even this night. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the challenge to our hearts tonight. We thank you for the precious scriptures that have been read tonight. We pray, Father, that you would sink them into our hearts and we would grow close to thee. We pray for those that are going through times of difficulty. We know there are some that are recovering from sickness. There are some that are going through times of season of sickness. And Lord, there are some that may be dealing with decisions in their lives. There may be some spiritual battles happening. Father, we're faced with spiritual warfare every day. 
And we thank you for the armor of God that you've equipped us with to be able to stand and having done all to stand by your power and by your might. Father, we pray for the unsaved today that they would come to know Jesus as their personal savior. We pray for the those that we can be a witness and a testimony to. Father, we pray that you would continue to use this ministry for your glory. Father, we thank you for the blessings that come our way each and every day. And Father, may we be thankful. May we be part of that multitude that are thankful today and that are seeking to lift you up and uh, desiring to honor you and to fulfill your will for our lives until you come or until you call us home to be with thyself. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time tonight. We pray you'd part us with thy blessing. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank thee. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight, and the Lord willing, we'll uh, be back online on the Lord's Day. Take care, each one.